IPO to 280 amp hours lithium ion phosphate battery cells last January from Alibaba. However, I have not yet received notice of their arrival in the United States. Meantime, I have been busy to prepare for building battery box and other necessary electrical components. Right now, I am on the way to Salem to buy some plywood for battery box construction. Three years ago, I bought pre-finished plywood for my camper van conversion in this store. Local Home Depot or Lowe's does not carry pre-finished plywood. Also, the price are about half of those stores. Today, I need a half inch thick pine wood panel. Just need a half of the whole 4x6 panel to build the battery box and cookware cabinets. Half inch birch panel is just about $32. Quite a good price, isn't it? Whole store layout has been changed, so I get confused. Finally, I found a scrap plywood, which might be abandoned by someone. It was priced at $5 and $1 for each cut. The quality is not A-class, but it will be okay for my use. For precision cut, a huge vertical saw was used. I asked for three cuts. Remaining small cuts using table saw were free of charge. What a deal, isn't it? Just eight bucks was all about the cost for my battery box and cookware cabinets. Underneath the desk, located in the behind of driver seat, you may see a lead SD batteries. I have two lead SD batteries and the other one is located in the between front seat. Volume of four lithium ion phosphate cells is a little bit smaller than the single lead SD batteries. The top compartment houses battery management system, automatic temperature controller, active equalizer, cooling fan, and the current measuring shunt resistor. The lower compartment will house four of 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate cells and the heating pad placed underneath the shelves. As you may know, the lithium ion phosphate cells are very vulnerable to be downgraded or damaged under freezing or over 45 centigrade temperature. To protect the cells, I placed a quarter inch thick insulation pad. The current consumption by heating pad can be minimized by this way of insulation. In the upper compartment, you may see Dali 120 amp hour BMS unit. This smart BMS comes with a Bluetooth dongle, temperature probe, and computer connection cables. So you can set the customized parameters and monitoring the performance of each cell. In the right next to BMS, there is a small device called AEQ Active Equalizer. It will actively balance the cells to protect the cell degradations and providing maximum capacity. ATC Automatic Temperature Controller will turn on the exhaust fan for cooling or turn on the heating pad for maintaining target temperature. Battery shunt register will provide charging and discharging voltage and currents for monitoring the state of charge. At the moment, the project is undergoing, so the wiring looks so messy. After closing the front panel, I can store utility containers on the top of the battery house. Saving of every inch space is very crucial for the minivan camper. On the right side, I store a 120 watts foldable solar panel. And travel carrier also well fit in the remaining space. Lastly, my laptop computer bag can be squeezed into the last space. This viewer comes from the behind of the driver's seat. 
The space is quite limited, but there is no other places for easy maintenance access in my van. There is a 1200 watts inverter, which is fit all of my electrical cookware. 120 watts MPPT solar controller will play a role of extra power source at off-grid station. There are two more shunt resistors for monitoring the inverter load and the solar charging power. I placed two channel booster converter to level up 13.8 volt alternator power to 14.5 volt for charging lithium ion phosphate shells. Each booster converter handles maximum 22 amps with a 14.5 constant voltage. To detect the engine running, I implemented homemade VSR voltage sensitive relay units. For casual charging lead acid starter batteries, I placed a 7 amp SLI charger. Lithium ion phosphate cells also can be chargeable by another dedicated 20 amp charger. Lastly, whole electrical system can be switchable between power from in house batteries and the shore power supply. The advantages of this upgrade to lithium ion phosphate are so many. The best of best is I do not need to worry about anymore about the use of electricity for many, many years. After completion of this project, I'd like to share how-to videos for your inspiration. 280 amp hour lithium ion phosphate, four sales cost about $300. Dali 120 amp hour smart BMS was 90 bucks and about 50 bucks for miscellaneous components. Okay, this is all about today's project introductions. More DIY videos are coming soon. Thank you for your watchings and do not forget subscribing this channel.